Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Recommended Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And there's no shortage of news today, but we're going to start things out with NVIDIA, specifically news of the GTX 1180. Because yet more rumours are circulating the internet that this is really a genuine product that NVIDIA intends to release. As a quick reminder then, the CES 2019 conference from NVIDIA took place a couple of days ago, but there was no mention of these cost-reduced GPUs. We saw the launch of the RTX 2060, which panned out to be roughly what we expected. GTX 1170 Ti cast performance, give or take a few percent, depending on the game, at 350 US dollars with six gigabytes of RAM. We saw the launch and announcement of various laptops featuring the RTX 20 series of GPUs, which are essentially identical to that of the, la of the desktop derivatives, but the difference between them and, the and their desktop counterparts is reduced clock speeds. And finally, the support of adaptive sync monitors, which is pretty cool, but certainly no mention of the GTX 11 series. The primary difference between the RTX and the GTX series is supposedly the absence of the ray tracing cores. Tensor cores are unknown. I've not heard solid confirmation one way or the other, but certainly the ray tracing technology is removed, and I would certainly not be surprised if the tensor cores are also not present. However, there has been an update to the story because on GFX Bench we see an entry for a GTX 1180 GPU. Now, assuming it's genuine, and let's face it, it's not confirmation from NVIDIA, so until we see an announcement from NVIDIA, these are just rumours, the card is actually being identified as an RTX 20 series GPU but the actual entry is listed as the GTX 11 series. So there's a couple of possibilities. The first is obviously this particular entry is fake. The second theory is it is using a Turing-based core, but with whatever changes NVIDIA are making present. Now, this means there's a couple of possibilities. The first is that these cores have defective RT units, for example, or defective uh, tensor cores or what have you. If that's the case, then obviously you would not be able to use that technology. The other possibility is they're not defective. NVIDIA are just simply laser cutting them, or perhaps a certain percentage of them are defective. And then NVIDIA are just laser cutting the remainder so that you can't enable them. The third possibility is there is no hardware difference. They just simply are disabling them through, for example, a BIOS, which might mean they lock down the BIOS, therefore you can't flash it. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, if it is possible, but you would just need a lot of um, soldering experience slash mod experience to be able to do it. So the average user simply wouldn't be able to, you know, use NV Flash and then just update the BIOS and now you've got ray tracing. But unfortunately, all of this is speculation on my part because we don't really know the specifications of the card other than, you know, ray tracing is disabled and so on. It's also quite interesting because it would mean that NVIDIA do have a way to enter the market at a, a reduced price. And I'll get into some AMD rumors in just a second. So it's possible that AMD will face competition from NVIDIA when they do launch their series of GPUs. And that's why NVIDIA are holding back the launch of the GTX series. What they're essentially doing, if this pans out to be true, is like, well, you know, those people who have the funds and can afford the RTX series of cards they can go out and buy, let's say, an 1180, sorry, an RTX 2080 Ti. Jesus, even I'm getting confused over the names. They can go out and buy like an RTX 2080 Ti because they've got that disposable income. And then they release the 11 series of cards when Nvidia released, the, sorry, when AMD released Navi and so on. And that brings us to the next rumor for today. And that concerns AMD because the website WCCF Tech claims that we will actually see some announcements from AMD regarding the Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs along with uh, a Vega 2 slash Vega 7, let's just call it Vega 7NM class GPU for consumers. So why are AMD doing this? Well, supposedly it's because they don't want to overpromise what the product is capable of and then under deliver. Instead, they want to take more of an original Zen approach. You might recall that originally they had promised like a 40% IPC gain with the original Zen architecture, but then it turned into like over 50%. So they want to keep that philosophy 
with Ryzen 3000. Oh, and just to clarify, the Ryzen 3000 series for mobile is indeed 12nm, whereas, of course, the Ryzen 3000 for desktops and whatever else is indeed going to be 7nm. So what we're going to see here is a soft launch, which is going to be taking place at CES. And then in terms of actual physical hardware where you can buy it, that's not going to be until some point in the second quarter of this year. Honestly, I am much more confident to say that this is what I personally believe. I've spoken to a couple of different uh, partners of AMD, and none of them have been like, well, yeah, we're ready to give details on what the motherboards, you know, what our motherboard lineup will be or what our products we're going to be releasing to coincide with that. Supposedly, we will also see some type of announcement concerning the next generation of Vega cards for gamers. Whether you want to call it Vega 2, Vega 7 NM, Vega 7, what have you, we will see some type of announcement with a launch of uh, the second quarter of 2019. So identical to that of Ryzen 3000, essentially. I've heard similar myself from a couple of different sources, but whether it pans out to be true or not, we can only wait and see. I've heard the performance level is going to be greater than that of the 1080 Ti, possibly almost up to the RTX 2080 Ti, and will cost around the 800 US dollar mark, slightly more, slightly less. Obviously, that depends on the cost of the materials of the GPU, what the yields are like, and so on. AMD are supposedly rather confident about what they are going to be showing at CES 2019, and they will indeed be first to market with 7nm. You might recall that I also put out a video a couple of days ago concerning NVIDIA. And from what we're hearing from a couple of sources over in Japan, uh, NVIDIA will be leveraging the 7nm process from Samsung for its next generation of GeForce cards, which will allegedly launch in 2020. So obviously that does give AMD some leg room to get ahead of the competition, particularly in the mid-range market. It's only about 24 hours now before AMD's conference does take place, but I do believe that the company will hold back a lot of details until the products do finally launch. Not only because they don't want to, you know, over promise and then under deliver, but on top of that, you also have the other factor and that is PR. The more people they can get talking about their product, the more people they can get interested about the performance of their product, the less work they have to do in selling the product to more people. And obviously, since they are the underdogs right now, at least compared to, let's say, NVIDIA and Intel, that just makes sense from a business perspective. Back in 2016, Intel was supposed to debut Canon Lake on the 10NM process, but that just hasn't happened. And 10NM has, of course, been, well, notoriously problematic for the company. Technically speaking, anyway, there have been 10NM CPUs, but they have just been PR pieces, very limited in quantity and certainly very limited in terms of the number of SKUs available. But according to CES 2019 conference anyway from Intel, this is no longer going to be the case as the company are entering high volume manufacturing for Ice Lake. That's right, Ice Lake will be available by the end of 2019, both in terms of desktop and mobile processors. And we will see a significant uptick in performance. Deep learning performance on whatever uh, applications will support it is supposedly going to see a drastic improvement, but traditional code will also see a significant performance increase thanks to numerous architectural changes. We have a list of some of them, although certainly not all of them. Sunny Cove is a more wider architecture, so we have a five wide allocations architecture instead of four. There are 10 execution ports instead of eight. We also see twice the level one storage bandwidth and also level one data cache is 50% larger, and that's combined with a larger level two cache. We also see a large operations cache as well as a larger second level translation look aside the buffer. And finally, these are along with further Spectre and Meltdown hardware fixes onto the silicon itself. So basically, by the end of this year, Intel should be ready to play and release a variety of different products available to the market, which should help to thwart the AMD threat. There is just one small issue with all of this, though, from the perspective of Intel anyway, and that is that supposedly anyway, Intel did design the Zen 2 micro architecture to not combat Intel's current generation of processors, but instead to combat 
ice lake. But of course, Intel are not first to the market, AMD are. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out. Just because AMD designed Zen 2 to combat Ice Lake doesn't mean that Zen 2 will beat or even be close to Ice Lake. After all, Ice Lake is coming later, so it's not technically impossible for Intel to have had more time to just improve the CPU architecture and be like, well, now we know what Zen 2 is roughly capable of, we're just going to tweak things a little more and get more out of the silicon. It's also possible, though, that Intel just aren't able to do that. So this year, 2019 is going to be a very interesting battleground and of course this enters into 2020 where the two companies compete in a different arena and that is GPUs. I guess my point is that the next couple of years in terms of technology is going to be fascinating as we could see battle lines completely redrawn. I mean it's not impossible, unlikely possibly, but it's not impossible that we could see a complete turnaround with AMD focusing on APUs and integrated solutions and their CPUs being the winner and their GPUs being, you know, okay. And Intel to be behind AMD in the CPU side of things, but their discrete GPUs being pretty damn impressive and maybe actually competing with or surpassing Nvidia. That could be what we see in Bizarro World. I mean, who really knows? I look forward to seeing exactly what does occur over the next couple of years because, frankly, all three companies are going to be producing different architectures and putting all of their engineering efforts into them, but it's really us as, of course, consumers which will be winning here. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel and like the video because that does help us out a lot. You can, of course, also find us on Patreon, which is linked in the video description, along with some Amazon affiliate links if you want to buy like a coffee filter or something like that. That does help us out, believe it or not. And well, that's about it for this video. So take care of yourselves. Bye for now.